I think this 1080p IPS monitor from InnoView looks pretty good even when compared with the high-end MacBook Pro 16-inch with Retina display. It is a great way to increase the productivity when used in the extended desktop mode. That's everything in the box. The portable monitor, the protective case, USB-C to USB-C cable, HDMI to mini HDMI. It feels quite responsive. I can totally game on this thing. And yes, it works great with the Nintendo Switch, the USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable. Keep in mind, it has dual USB Type-C full functioning ports on the right side, which means it can be powered and get the signal from this one single USB-C cable with my MacBook Pro. This monitor has a great build quality. Not only it has two VESA mount screws in the back, it also is magnetic, so I plan to mount it here on my pegboard. Two rubber feet and speakers with the included USB Type-C to Type-C cable. It should work with any modern laptop out of the box. Just connect it to either of these USB Type-C ports on the right and connect this one to the laptop it boots up. It will get the signal as well as the power from this one cable. And I can uh, change the display arrangements or, or position orientation from the system display setting. And I just make sure it is using the native 1080p resolution. Now let me turn off the light and do an image quality comparison with the MacBook Pro. Retina display and make sure it is 50% brightness and this MacBook is also set at 50% brightness. We can see it is slightly darker than the MacBook screen, but here is the catch. It will not run at full brightness with the USB-C single connection, the external power supply is required to run it at maximum brightness. Let's plug it in and see how it goes. This is the USB Type-A adapter, which has a wide range of voltage outputs rated from 5 volts all the way to 12 volts 1.5 amp. I'll connect it to my power meter so we can see the power consumption of this monitor. The advantage of using an external power supply is not only it is brighter, it is also not draining the battery from the MacBook. It is consuming 15 watts of power, so it is significantly brighter. Let's see it again. I'm going to turn off the light, the same setting. The brightness is at 100%. I'm going to crank it up at 100%. Both monitors are running at 100% brightness. It is worth mentioning that the power consumption is at 15 to 16 watts and the MacBook shows it is charging and it's drawing power from this setup. USB Type-C to USB Type-C, then the USB Type-A supplies power to the USB Type-C port. This is probably one of the simplest solution to mount it onto a metal pegboard from wall control using these tiny magnetic hooks. I also have one up there just to prevent accidents from happening. It has a little bit of magnetic connection between the pegboard. However, I think it is a good idea to add an extra safety measure up there so it's less likely to fall over. With the Lightning to HDMI adapter, I can use that monitor as a true monitor 
when I'm shooting the video here. With Xbox, uh, it has stereo speakers built in. I'm positioning my microphone down there so it, perhaps you can hear what it sounds like. It is nothing amazing, but it has sound, right? So I can, uh, if I press this button down, I can change the volume. I, actually, I was running it at maximum volume, 100%. It feels quite responsive. I can totally game on this thing. You'll be tracked by an enemy team. Okay, Let's take a look at the image quality in the game. Walk through the menu options by pressing down this toggle. The brightness comes at 100% factory setting and 50% uh, contrast. Eco mode is standard or I can do game mode, which doesn't look very nice. Movie photo RTS I think the standard looks the best and let's press the power button one more time to go back to the previous menu option the you know top level we got color temperature tone saturation low blue light color gamut native yeah I'm not gonna touch other settings audio setting Mute is off, volume is 14. Nothing special there. Other settings, we have HDR, which is off. I'm gonna turn it uh, to automatic because the 2084 doesn't look very nice. And reset button. Input source, I can do Type-C or HDMI. So if I have another input here, for example, connected to a laptop, I can use this Type-C to HDMI source input to uh, toggle between the uh, gaming console or the computer. Or I can quickly access that input source menu from uh, top right by pressing down the bu power button. Let me try long press the power button, see if we'll turn it off. Yes, it does turn off the monitor with the power switch pressed down. Now I'm going to long press it. It brings the monitor back. Possible to power the monitor through the USB ports from the gaming console as well, or a computer USB port. Since its power consumption is pretty low, I'm wondering if I can use a battery bank to power the monitor. It looks like that is doable. So I'm using a basis 22.5 watts battery bank that is driving this monitor. Uh, so this is the whole connection. The U my mini HDMI goes to the full-size HDMI in the um, Xbox down there. An ultra compact gaming package, portable gaming package that consumes only 17 watts, under 18 watts. So this whole setup can run from a battery bank HDMI connection to the monitor and the USB-C to USB-C connection to the charger to power the Nintendo Switch. And the monitor also runs off this multi-port charger from Basis. The case design is also very interesting. It is magnetic, so it attaches like that. Offers great protection to use it. Open it like this, all the way to the other side and it provides two angle adjustments. On the left side, we have three components, the on off switch, the menu toggle, and the headphone jack. On the right side, two USB type C full functioning ports and a mini HDMI input. All right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you find this review helpful.